Hi, hello. My name is Paweł Farid. I actually understood a few words that he said, even though I don't speak Russian. Uh, you, you, always got, you all guys speak English? I, uh, because he said that it's a surprise that I'll be doing this presentation in English. I hope that's okay. Okay, so like I said, I, I'm Paweł Farid. I came here from Poland. So I came from Gdańsk, and this is my first time in Russia. So the winter here feels like, in a lot of ways, like home. So when I landed here, it somehow felt like home. Because <laughs> we also have pretty cold winters here. I know that it's not as cold as it gets, but still. Today I'll be talking about the Atlassian playbook. This is the framework that Atlassian created for you guys to better, better work with your teams, with people in your organization. So uh, I'm a, like I said, I'm a Jira server dev manager and I'm crowd dev manager as well. I know that probably most of you uses Jira here. But who uses Jira? <laughs> but who knows what crowd is? Also. <laughs> so I said, like the, I'll tell you about the playbook, then we'll have a small interactive game, we, and then I'll have some time for question and answers, OK? So I put in this picture in because it looks cool. <laughs> no, actually, I said I'm from Atlassian, but actually I'm from Spartas. There is a separate entity. Atlassian has an office sort of in Poland, but this is like a different company. We work within Atlassian structures, so I have two bosses. One, my, one of my bosses is uh, uh, from Atlassian, and the other is co-founder of that company. So I also have teams that are like a part of Spartas, and some of my team that I manage are in Atlassian in Sydney. So it's a bit complicated. Feel free to ask me questions about it later on, OK? <laughs> so today's presentation will be about confidence. So I would like to give you a framework to give you, that will give you more confidence in working with your teams, with your partners, basically with people without your organization. It, not, it won't be about Atlassian products. I know Atlassian products are great, and some of them might help you with working with your teams. But this will be about process and confidence, and how you get confidence with what you're doing, by knowing that you're doing the right way, the right thing, the right time, and with the right people. And I'll try to introduce you a framework that will help you a bit with that. OK, makes sense? Who's that? OK, so Neil Armstrong, what did he do? Actually, Neil Armstrong didn't land on the moon. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's NASA did land on the moon. So actually, it's all about the team. It's not we, we're living in the culture that we're appreciating individuals' effort. But without each individual effort, there is a team. There is a whole team working for it. So behind a great success, there is always a team. So Neil Armstrong didn't land on the moon. NASA did. So there's another great example of, a, of a success. That is the first heart transplantation in Poland. That is 1987. The operation took 23 hours. And a lot of people know Professor Rediga. This is the guy who did it. But they're not aware that there are a lot of people who worked for that. And oh, there was a team effort. And you can see in the corner, his assistant, he's sleeping. So yeah, another great team effort which is only associated with one person. So this is the, I like to choose this picture because this is, I thought, what is the, uh, which, is, which the uh, team, sports team is the greatest in Russia? And I thought you have a pretty good volleyball team. Is that right? Yeah. So I like this picture for two reasons. This shows that behind the guys playing on the field, there is a group of people that is supporting them. So they are coaches, physiotherapists, doctors, cookers, whatever. And it's not like the guys need a lot of support in order, in order to perform that well. And there is another great analogy. Like in, on the field, in the team, you need like people with different skill set. So you got those tall guys who are blockers, blocking the ball. So you got receivers, so small, agile, fast guys. And actually, what I like about the sports analogy is that uh, they optimize, they, they manage the diversity paradox very well. So the, they optimize the differences in each players to maximize the outcome. 
And this is what, what like working in the te with the teams in, in the teams is about. You get different set of people with different backgrounds, different skill set, different ways of solving problems. And then you still have to work towards one goal, towards one outcome. And navigating that and managing that, this is the biggest challenge, but at the same time, the biggest excitement about working with the teams. Okay? So, like, the... <laughs> This is like, is this a dysfunctional team? Like one person is working and the other is cheering? So it seems like a dysfunctional team. So the thing is like working in a team is very hard. It's not about right tooling and right people. So what makes a, a team is successful? So we take a look at it in Atlassian and we were looking at that because we know that a great success comes from great teams. So how, for, if you have high performance, uh, good working teams, you're destined for success. So the question is, what constitutes such a good team? So if you put a lot of great people and, and make them work together, so would it make a great team? And we looked into that, and we figure out that it's not, not, the, it's not enough. If you put in one room like a lot of great minds, they still have to cope with that other and get along. So it's not enough to have a great team and great tools. What else do you need? So you have the right tools, right people, you need right practices. Okay? And this is what the, this presentation is about, right practices. So I give you a framework, and this is my subjective snapshot of that framework. I just picked a few things that I like, but I encourage you to use to try out all of those plays they'll be presenting and there you can find them in the Atlassian, uh, Atlassian pages. So, Atlassian, we do care about people and because we are making and we care about teams because our, th our software is basically about supporting teams. So Jira, Confluence, even Crowd. Those are, these are the products that are supposed to make you, your team work better and more effectively. So we like the teams that much that our symbol on their stock market is team. Did you know about it? Okay. <laughs> okay, so like, if you put like, a one engineer on a task, so he will, he will probably be a great engineer. He will do a great engineering work but not necessarily a good product, a useful product. Uh, the, the product with the UX. You have to have a, a lot of diverse people with different skills on such a team, the high performing team. You, need to, you have to UX product managers. And we are trying in Atlassian to, uh, to figure out what to do to make this team work well, those team work well and perform well. So why did we introduce the Atlassian uh, playbook and how it came about? So in Atlassian, we are facing like, different challenges. We are growing very fast. I joined Atlassian like two years ago, and I was employee number 1,000. And right now, we have 2,500 2 employees. So the things they were doing a week ago not necessarily work today because you got new people, new product, new challenges, new customers, new requirements. And the second challenge is people expect you to be multiplier. So even though you're not a leader, like officially, like you are not a team leader, you are not a manager, you're not a product manager, you are a team, you are a leader because people look to you and you are influencing other people. And your job is not about like doing coding or whatever you do in front of your desk, it's also about influencing other people. And the third thing is, is time. So we are all busy, right? And there's a lot of pressure like everywhere so to make more to work more efficiently. So that's the third challenge that we are witnessing in Atlassian. And the playbook was created to help us out with it. So if you can write out that uh, link, you can use your mobiles, you can, because we'll be using this later, okay? We can be using the link for our interactive play. So you can go to that link and open the Atlassian playbook. Okay, let me know when you're ready. <laughs> cool. So, the, how the Atlassian playbook was created. So basically, we observed how our teams are working 
It wasn't created by one person. It's basically our sweat and blood. We observed how our teams are working, and we wrote it down, and we made it available to you guys to use it at your will. So there are certain ways that uh, Atlassian do certain things. So I'm not saying that we'll, it will work in all the cases. I'm not giving you like uh, a gold solution to everything. They're, the plays are very suggested, but you have to adapt them. You can take them with a, and use them like uh, adjust them a bit. So I assume that there are some places when like command and control and centralized decision making and monolithic large teams work, but it doesn't work in Atlassian. So we emphasize empowerment of teams, some small empowered fast moving teams, decision making at the front, front rather at the centralized stage. So again, those are the things that work for Atlassian. They not necessarily may work for you, but I encourage you to explore them and adjust them and use them. So that's the old way, that's the Atlassian way. So what are the playbooks? The plays, we use the words on purpose, the word play, because they're supposed to be playful. You should supposed to enjoy them. You should supposed to have fun. And they're like recipes. You have a step-by-step -step solution, what to do, like in case if you encourage like difficulties with leadership, communication, project management. But again, like in every recipe, like you take 80% of them and 10 or 20% you change and adjust to make it work for you. Okay? You don't just like copy blindly, you just make them work for you and adjust them. Make sense? So if you go to that page, the, uh, so at the top of the page, we categorize the problems that you may encounter. So those might be the leadership deficit disorder problem, conflict priorities, stepping on each other's toes. We try to create like generalful, meaningful names for those problem categories. And if you click on one of those, you'll get, you'll get place. So if you encounter a problem with decision making or with your project, you can click at the, at the, at the problem category and then you will be given like uh, the place that you can use. And I, it's up to the teams, that's how we do it, to use one or another play. They need to figure out which place they work for them, how they work for them, and yeah, and they have to figure it out by themselves because that creates a sense of empowerment uh, contribution, ownership, yeah. Doesn't make sense what I'm saying? <laughs> okay, so another thing about place is that you have to use it at the right moment. There are some plays that you can use at any stage of your projects. There are some scrum plays. You can do stand-ups on daily basis, retrospectives on daily basis. But probably customer interview, you want to do it before you kick off your project. You, get to, you need to figure out what the customers are, you need and what are the problems. You can also do a customer interview at the end of your project because you probably will get, like to get input from customer if the feature or product that you are doing is working or not. Like demo trust or like experience canvas. This is a play that I use to frame your problem you vocalize, verbalize the problem and write it down. So everyone knows what a problem we're solving and what it's about. The project kickoff, it's probably you want to do it at the beginning of the project. And the sparring, so like along the project, you want to spar every major decision. So sparring means you, you challenge your decision with your colleagues, with your PMs, with your managers. And demo trust, demo trust, that's a play. When you are like presenting your assumptions, and presenting your decisions to like higher manage to your management to your like stakeholders, so you will gain trust, and they will know that, sh and they will trust you that you are doing the right thing. Okay, so time is important here. Okay, how to start? When to begin with? What to know? Which place do you have to use? What is working and what is not working for your team? So there is a good starting point, and it's called. Run team health monitor. There is a matter of all plays. There is a phase one. There is a good starting point when you can try to figure out what's wrong with your team and then which place to use to help them out. Okay? So first of all, you run a team health monitor. It's you are actually scoring eight attributes of your team and those attributes will, will lead you directly to the place, to those categories that I've been showing you. Okay? So you start with a team health monitor. You assess the health of your team 
and then you let your team figure out which plays from those categories to use and how, them, how to use them. Okay? So let's start with the health monitor. So we got like three different type of health monitors because we figure out that there are three different major types of team. You have a project teams, they're responsible for delivering a project. We are, like, have a, like, leadership teams. They're responsible for setting like, visions, long-term goals, and communicating those goals. And uh, service teams, they're responsible for running and owning uh, like, internal and external services. So those are the guys working with SLAs, queues, with a lot of interruption work, with the being on call constantly, and so on. This is very valid in the micro, uh, microservices world. So you build it, you run it. And step first, the phase one. So what you do, you set the stage. So you have to be very careful how you do it, because the right attitude of, uh, the, of your team influence directly the success of the health monitor. So you have to set the wrong, right tone uh, of, of, uh, of, of the meeting. So there are no wrong and right questions. Everyone is equal, and uh, is, uh, everyone is equal, and uh, there is no care here. Because like, in order for the project to be successful, everyone has to do their part. So there are a few simple rules that you have to, sorry, that you have to obey. So I wrote them down, just not to uh, forget about them. So you have to listen and listen hard. And don't dive into problem solving until the end of the play. Don't settle or call things OK just to move on. And just don't rate without any context and always justify the rating that you're giving. OK? So how do you start? So like I said, you got eight categories that you have to score. I'll show you the categories and explain you later what are they about. And, and you have to score every category, like is it red, which is ill, which is yellow, is it yellow, which is like, ah, it's okay, and green, thumbs up. So you can, do, you can use post-its, but the way I do it is I use thumb. So one, two, three, and everyone goes thumbs up, sideways or thumbs down. So the, the very important thing about it is that you have to hear out everyone. So you, obviously you have people in the team that are very vocalized, they're very dominating. So you have to be careful and have to be sure that everyone speaks out and everyone shares their opinion. So you go like and another important tip here that is like you don't like discuss solution at this stage. You just call every attribute, you go through eight attributes, and then at the end you jump into solving the problems. That's phase three, but we are at phase two. Another another pro tip that you may use is that uh, sometimes you, you get teams, you get that sort of attitude that people just say, yeah, okay, yeah, let's move forward just to for the sake of finishing the exercise. So what you do in such a case, you just score by default every attribute to, uh, to red, and they have to justify that it's lower than red, that it's actually healthy. Okay, makes sense so far? Are you with me? Okay, so first three, you get those ace attributes, so, and then you have different score, and you have to drive towards consensus. Each attribute needs to have one score. So the thing is that uh, I tend to, if you, let's say, the balanced team, if you have uh, a lot of yellows and a lot of greens, I usually choose the, uh, the worst score, just to be uh, mindful, just to be, not to lose something. So in terms of a balanced team, in case of a balanced team, I would score yellow. Like, the, like let's say, the uh, like proof of concept. There are a lot of greens, then, but there is one, uh, one red, I'll still give it a yellow, just to, just to not forget about it and just to do something about it. So I'll try to explain these categories right now, okay, before our small exercise. So the full-time owner, it, it means that there is a person responsible, responsible for the project and is, dead, and is devoting at least 80% of his time to the project balanced team. It means that you have the right people with the right skill set to do the job. The shared understanding. Everyone in the team knows what the project is about, what are the goals, and what they need to do. 
the value and metrics. You know what are the outcome, what is the, the success criteria, uh, how do you measure failure and success, and what our metrics are for measuring that. Okay? Proof of concept. You actually, before jumping into implementation, you did something that like prove your theory that you presented like an end-to-end -end demo basically so you have a whole a holistic understanding of what it should be and uh, what is the outcome of that project one pager it means that uh, you can summarize the whole project its goals values and its meaning on one page the manage dependencies you know what you like what, what people are you depending on, what are the stakeholders for the project, and which people you are affecting in the organization. Like, you need to know what people you, like, like if you want to get a job done, you, you, uh, you, you need to know what people will make it happen. So for instance, like, uh, let's say I'm like uh, changing, uh, I'm running a project that is changing in the architecture of my product. So I need to, uh, or ch uh, introducing a new front-end framework. So like the dependencies will be probably the teams or the uh, products that I'm affecting, uh, the, uh, the, and so on. Yeah. Is that clear? I, I did a pretty vague explanation on that, but you, you get the idea. So velocity, are we delivering something? Are we moving fast enough? Are we actually producing something? Our like sprint, it can be expressed in a sprint velocity, but are we feeling that we're actually delivering something? Okay, makes sense? So that's the stage three. So uh, there is a, a stage four. So once you have all those attributes score, you need to pick two or three that you would like to improve. Don't try to improve them all. Just pick the, the ones that are with the worst score. In this case, I would like share the understanding, obviously, balance team, and let's say manage dependencies. Because I think those are, that would be the most important parts. And, yeah? Could you say a little bit more about proof of concept? Proof of concept, okay. So actually before, like, it's about end-to-end -end demo. It's like you prepare something and you validate it, that's something that you'll be doing. So you have a, like, some sort of a assurance that what you will be doing will work. So you don't start with the full implementation. You did a small proof of concept to validate your assumptions. Okay? And in that proof of concept, you validate, like, you create, like, you, you evaluate the whole end-to-end -end user ex experience and some technical assumptions as well. Okay? Make sense? So, what I was saying, yeah, you, you choose two or three categories that you want to improve, and then you come out with some improvement actions, action items. But another tip is don't like, uh, try to have those actions done within the next two or three weeks. Don't try to plan those actions for like next month or next year. So, I make sure that you don't have too many actions. Just three, four important actions. So two, one action on each category, okay? That, because otherwise, if you come up with a long list of actions, and some of the actions will be postponed in time, like in the months or five months from now, it won't happen. This is something that you have to react quickly upon. Okay, and don't be afraid of uh, yellow and red ratings. This is about honesty and being honest with yourself and with your teammates. And we got 20 plays to help you out with those red areas. So don't be afraid of uh, yellow and red things. It's a good thing, actually. So, yeah, and don't panic. <laughs> so the fifth step would be each of those categories will lead you directly to those plays. I show you the categories at the beginning. So you can, like, if you have a problem with communication or shared understanding, there is like a, a, a place category that address that. But the very important thing is, is let the team decide which place and how they want to use it. And I got five minutes, so I have to speed up. So we'll jump into, let's do the exercise, okay? So the exercise is about pick a partner next to you, pair up with someone, and then go to that page, pick a team type, and discuss one of the attributes that we discussed, and then share your opinion with us, okay? You want to do it? Yes. yes. 
Okay, so pair up, go to that page. I'll, I'll do the same here. Okay, so can you switch to mirror here? Yeah, I ha I'll switch to mirror. This is mirror. Okay, so choose the type of your team. Let's say it will be a project team, okay? Then here you have a, here you can choose the explanation of attributes, okay? And then try to discuss one and two and share the outcome with me if you if you if you feel like. What what do you feel doesn't work in your project? What you can improve? And right now I'm just presenting you one of the plays, and we have 20 plays to use. But this is a good starting point. Yeah, I know, but it's a lot of text and a lot of rows, so you can use the page. That's why I gave you the link for it. It's on the page. Okay? Someone ready to share their story? Yeah, doesn't work. Okay. That sucks. <laughs> the link. Can you show us? Yeah. So I can show you the page. So you go. Ah, big letters. Buy your book. Yeah. Case sensitive. Okay. So you end up here. So you choose a leadership team. Okay, the short link, yeah, let's do it. Here is the link. Sorry, I'm running late a bit. <laughs> okay? Cool. Someone's ready? You guys had a very good conversation here. No? You want to share something with us? No? Okay, not yet. Yeah, so this is the most important part, and we'll go to the... So I have a challenge for you. So the challenge is... Oh, I, I misspelled challenge. <laughs> That's why I was preparing it this morning. <laughs> you never prepare your presentation an hour before you. It's due. So the challenge is just may run one of the plays within the next uh, two weeks. So hopefully it would be the health monitor. So the challenge is run a health monitor within your teams within the next two weeks, okay? And I hope the challenge will be accepted. And just don't tell me that you don't have enough time for it. Okay, and you're too busy. <laughs> okay, so, sorry, question and answers. Let, let's, there's a photo time. I wanted to make a photo of the audience if you're okay with it. And then I'm up for any questions that you have. Go on. You want a mic? <laughs> Hello. Thank you very much. It was very interesting. I know that you have made uh, forms in uh, Confluence Cloud to yeah. support uh, all those amazing tools you've made for us. Uh, do you know when we can have a chance to use them on server uh, Confluence? Oh, that's a very hard question <laughs> because, and actually I'm not from Confluence, but do you have some exact like, uh, templates in mind? Because I, had a, I, I was supposed to present you one more time, because, uh, but I ran out of time. That was a DAISY page, so driver, acceptor, contributor, and inform. So, I actually, I cannot answer that question because I'm from Jira team. I'm responsible for Jira. I don't have that much insight on Confluence. Taking that, the most, uh, like the whole Confluence development is in Sydney, actually. So sorry that I cannot answer your question. But it's a, it was a great question. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. It was really helpful. So my question is, can you share some uh, cases uh, how you improved your teams, so you shared the framework, and okay, it will be yeah. great to learn how you improved your team, in, yeah. in, some, in any case, in any process. Okay. Yeah, thank so you. So, I usually run the health monitor, so I'll tell you a few plays that I'm using. So, I use health monitor a lot. So, for some teams, I use it on quarterly basis, and for some teams, I use it on monthly basis. So, it's like in our blood, 
whenever you want to, like we hit pause and we run the health monitor. I don't think I have an exact case like what happened afterwards because I already run it like uh, 30 or 40 times. I'm, I'm managing quite a few teams. But I, I'll tell you that I run them like at monthly or at least quarterly and, and they should be very useful to, to you. But the another like play that I'm using a lot is the uh, actually demo trust nowadays. So demo trust is like we have that I can tell you how it works. <laughs> like we, had a, we have a lot of good engineers, and they're very good at what they're doing, meaning coding. But not their, sometimes they're lacking of product gene, not all of them. We have like superior engineers that are good at coding and good about thinking about product. So there is a very useful <laughs> so if you, play that you can use, which is demo trust. So actually, you, you validate your assumptions against stakeholders. So you present what are your assumptions, what are the end game, what are the values that your product will be, and it's being like validated, and, uh, and your stakeholders, like your PMs, like uh, your uh, higher level managers, like your department, head of department, and some, or senior PMs, they can actually share your opinion with, with, with that. So this is like this is a way of injecting some product gene into into the engineering teams. So yeah, yeah. that's great. So the question is, uh, you mentioned a lot of stakeholders, but you didn't mention any users in those. Yeah. So uh, so users, do, do, yeah. yeah, do you try it with users like beta staging or something of like course, that? Of course, of yeah. course. We there is a great play that you can use, and at least there are several plays. Uh, uh, they are concerning users, and they are about interaction with users. So you can use the play what is called customer interview. So you can get a very, very good insight about what are the problems of your customers, what, what are they struggling with, how they are, what do they need, and uh, this is one approach. And you can also use the, uh, the uh, uh, customer interviews to validate your products. You can A-B test something. You can like, see what are the perception of the product that you just released. So there is another one which is called customer empathy, which you are trying to identify yourself and emphasize with your customer and figure out what is the problem that we need to solve. Okay? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Okay, it will be the last one, okay. Uh, thank you for your talk. I'm a QA, so my questions probably will be a bit surgical. Yeah. Uh, so first, uh, health monitor is a really good stuff, so great stuff, I'd say. But for example, if you define that your own team have some disease and people around also are sick, but sick in a different way. So what's here? Uh, what is the scope of this health analysis and how to involve it in uh, like larger enterprises? And uh, that's good when you are sick and people around you are healthy, but uh, usually everyone has their own diseases. You mean uh, other teams? Uh, other teams that so are your, your team can be healthy, but uh, all the other teams are like not that healthy. Uh, right? Yeah, or they are not unhealthy in different ways and you okay. need to communicate. So where is the scope and the limits of your method, of your framework? Okay, so it's, it's on, the, on the team's level. So my advice would be encourage them to run the health monitor as well. <laughs> so there is no solution for like, uh, uh, there is not a play that will cure the whole company. It's just like, because previously I showed you a slide that we have this model of empowering teams. So we have a, like pretty small, independent, fast-moving teams. Of course, they depend on other teams. But it just if you try to make the, each of those teams more healthy, that would be the, for the benefit of the, the, the whole company. So the answer is you, they, all of those teams need to run health monitors. So. so you follow the advice that if everyone is healthy, then the links are healthy too? Yes, of course. Uh -huh. Because there is the, the, I agree with you completely. There it might be an issue that you have a lot of dependencies, and the teams that you're depending on, they're not that healthy, and they're just blocking you. So it might be the case, right? And there is no straight answer today. You try to make this team also healthy. They should run the health monitor. Yeah. And another question. Sorry, I'm a QA again. Yeah. Uh, and if for those nice colored bullets, uh, you have uh, to choose between red and glowing red. There is no, no sh shades of red, sorry. There is no shades of red. It's a uh, but let's imagine that you have like all reds. Uh, any devices here? Then it will be red. Then it's still red. Red is red. Red is unhealthy. There is no more unhealthy and more and more unhealthy. There is just unhealthy. 
Okay, thank you. <laughs> that was a good question. <laughs> okay, someone's name took to my mind. Yeah, unfortunately, the battery is down. Thank you, Pavel.